Hello, hello. Yeah, this feels a bit weird, doesn't it? I'm going to do this in English, even though I speak French. You're going to listen in English, even though you speak French. Ce serait beaucoup plus simple de faire ça comme ça, but no, let's do a whole show in English. Okay, let's go for it. Why not? It's a bit weird to do it in this room as well, because I've done a lot of shows here in French. Because, yeah, and like Seb and Paul, I do have a career in my home country. <laughs> I think it's so weird. They lived in the UK and the US, who are two of the best countries to do comedy. You know, like, ah, oh, fuck it, let's leave, let's go elsewhere. They left their country to go to Paris and try and blow up there. Who does that except ISIS terrorists? <laughs> I can make fun of Seb and Paul because I'm good friends with Seb and uh, I'm basically Paul Taylor. <laughs> When I saw Paul starting doing comedy, I met with him and I was like, ah, oh, shit, this guy looks exactly like me. That's going to be really annoying. And then I saw the upside. I was like, ah, oh, if I fuck up my career, I can already have his. <laughs> Hello, I'm British. I just got fucking married. <laughs> Just that one sentence exhausted me already. <laughs> I'm from Lausanne, right next door, so I may not be the funniest comedian tonight, but I'm the one... I'm... Yeah, don't fuck up my joke just because you're from the same city as me, please. <laughs> Let me speak. No, I'm not the funniest comedian here tonight, but I'm the one with the lowest carbon footprint. So that's nice. <laughs> yeah. No planes for me to get here, just interregio. It was just fine. <laughs> yeah, I take public transport. I like taking public transport. I don't have a car. I don't like cars. Maybe some people here like cars. I saw the parking lot. But uh, I don't understand people who like cars, who go online to watch pictures of cars and who go to the car show in Geneva. I never understood that. I went once and I saw they still have after Me Too these days. They have young, beautiful women next to the cars to show people where the cars are. <laughs> And I really don't get it. These dudes want to see cars show them cars, you know? When you go to the script club, you don't have a Ford Fiesta spinning around the pole, do you? <laughs> Let's not mix everything up, you know? Oh, I have high mileage, but a lot of experience, if you know what I mean. <laughs> You're with your friends. I have four seats. Hop up. Um, <laughs> And I don't like when people drive really aggressively and they have road rage and they're really annoying on the wheel. And I think my theory is a lot of those people watch car races, Formula One races on the weekend, and it goes really fast. And then on the Monday, they take their own car. Not the same thing at all. <laughs> Takes them an hour to get to work and they get really annoyed. And my theory is if we make Formula One races more realistic, it will be better for everybody. Put some red lights in, put some roundabouts, put some... <laughs> old ladies crossing the street. It would calm everybody down. That's my theory. I think the worst part is when the Ferrari stops uh, for the pit stop and they change the whole car in eight seconds. And then we go to the garage. Not the same thing at all. We should put regular mechanics in the Formula One races. When Lewis Hamilton stops, he waits for 15 minutes. And then a bald dude and a wife beater with stains shows up and looks at the car and is like, You're not getting it before Friday. Um, I got to order some spare parts in Germany, but uh, if you're interested, I got a Ford Fiesta that's trying to get out of prostitution. I can get you a good price. Now, I have a lot of respect for people who take public transport and with climate activists, the best is Greta Thunberg. She takes sailboats and trains all across the world. I have a lot of respect for that. Um, I saw recently she went to a climate summit in Moscow and she took the train for 72 hours. She was posting pictures on Twitter about her trip and she posted her picnic. And she got thousands of comments of people saying, your sandwich is wrapped in plastic, you hypocrite. Dude, she's been on the train for three days. What is she supposed to do? Bring a bread-making machine with her? Have a wheelbarrow full of quinoa seeds? What is she supposed to do? I hate when people do that because they try to poke holes in the actions of people who do something to feel better about not doing anything themselves. That's what they do. It's like, oh, she eats plastic-wrapped sandwiches. I can keep my SUV. No, no, it's not going to work. No, I'm scared. I'm scared that if we do nothing in two generations' time, there's going to be nothing left to eat, and my granddaughter will have to eat her brother, and uh, 
she'll be looking at me and asking, Grandpa, did you really do everything you could to save the planet? And uh, I'll be like, yeah. Because um, at one point, the plastic bags at Migros started costing five cents. And um, <laughs> at the end of emails, we put, think of the planet before printing. So I really don't see what else we could have done. This was the <laughs> maximum amount of effort that we put in. And by the way, finish your brother. There's a bit of food that I can see sticking out. Come on. Think of all the only children that have nothing to eat. And... No, I have a lot of respect for climate activists because uh, I try to be woke, I try to be politically active, but I, ha I need to pick my battles because I don't have enough energy. Uh, like this year, I saw something that really pissed me off in Brunei, uh, you know, the state in Southeast Asia, Brunei, Brunei. Uh, they passed a law that said if you're guilty of being a homosexual, uh, you get stoned. And I think that's excessive. <laughs> and George Clooney agreed. And George Clooney started a whole online campaign because the Sultan of Brunei is one of the richest people in the world and he owns a lot of five-star hotels. So he started the campaign to boycott all of the Sultan of Brunei's five-star hotels in the world. And that's the type of action I can really get behind. <laughs> Those are the courageous acts that I prefer because they demand to change absolutely nothing about my own behavior. I can keep on living like I just did, but I'm a better person for it, so I really like that. And I'm proud to announce to you that all year I successfully boycotted every five-star hotel owned by the Sultan of Brunei. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, it was not easy. It wasn't easy every day. Sometimes the urge to book a presidential suit in the Bahamas in the middle of the night was there, but I really held on. And some days that's all I could muster the energy to do. Like I couldn't do anything else. And my roommate would come home and look at me and I was on my underwear and the couch. And he'd be like, oh, you did nothing all day. Wrong. <laughs> Today I fought homophobia. <laughs> I'm sort of an LGBTQ hero of sorts. <laughs> I made the world a better place. What did you do? And, uh, <laughs> no, I really liked it because it went viral on social media because George Clooney shared a list of hotels and a lot of the people shared th that list in their own Instagram feeds and stories. And I saw a lot of people in my Instagram that were sharing the list of hotels. And I couldn't help but wonder, like, I could see some of my friends on Instagram sharing and I was like, come on, girl. You're a manicurist in Morge. <laughs> Let's not pretend like that's changing your holiday plans for you. Like, I'm sure the Sultan of Brunei is shaking when he sees that you shared it, Jessica. She, you got 30 followers, 12 of them are unemployed. I think his business plan is crumbling. My favorite protest ever, uh, and I'll leave you on this, was John Lennon and Yoko Ono's bed-in, which happened 50 years ago. They got married, and for their honeymoon, they decided to go in a hotel room and stay in bed for a week to protest war in the world. Genius. Because <laughs> that's the type of act I love, you know, because I want to be part of the revolution, but not if I have to do anything. When people say make love, not war, both seem really tiring. Isn't there an option, take a nap, because I'd be down for that. So that's a genius move, just stay in bed. Imagine all the people staying in bed forever. It would have been amazing, like no more wars if everybody stays in bed, except pillow wars maybe, but just a genius idea. You just have to pick a hotel that's not owned by the Sultan of Brunei. But apart from that, genius idea, just stay in bed forever, cure and solve every war. But they didn't do it enough. They did it for a week. They should have done it forever because they did it for a week and then John Lennon decided to get up, get out and got shot. So. Follow your own advice, dude. I'm not taking any risks. I'm going back to the hotel room to fight World War. Thank you very much. Have a good night.